It's the Debak Show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Debak Show. I'm your host. Give me an Australian name. Uh, Aussie Osmefican. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, today. <laughs> I don't know why it took me so long to think of a name for you. <laughs> I was like, up to up. Uh, my name is Wizard of Oz, yeah. And today we have a very special guest. Uh, we are joined by the incredibly talented Destiny hey. Rogers. Hey man, thank you so much. That was a great intro. Love, love the accent. Thank really you, thank it. you. How are I you with accents? It. Pretty well. I'm good at a British accent. Really? Yeah. Okay, can, can we hear? I'm going to give you a little… Yeah. All right. Um, hold on. What should I say? Hello, what's going on guys? Uh, it's Destiny. Um, from Lodi, Lodi, California. But I'm British at the same time. So… Wow. Um, yeah, I work with a lot a lot of songwriters that, that talk British. like this. That are British. Yeah, so… Um, and I talk like this with my mom all the time. My mum, sorry. Your mum. My mum yeah. and Kat over there. She she talks like this with me she all British the time. She's British as well? Yes, she is. Kat, oh, wow. go ahead and say something. Yeah, there you Absolutely. go. Absolutely. <laughs> oh my gosh. Bloody British. <laughs> You watched your footy last night. Mm-hmm. I have no idea what I said. What something something last? <laughs> all I heard was foot fo- last night. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Anyways, all right, guys, we have Destiny Rogers here. Yes, we do. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Please say hello to all of our listeners. Hello, listeners. What's going on? So glad to be here. Hope you enjoy the next five hours of us talking. Yeah, it's going to be five <laughs> and a half. Get ready. Yeah, the sun's going to be down by the time we're done. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um. It's our first time meeting. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm very excited to speak with you. Get to know you a little bit better. Thank you. Same as… Same um, as well. I'm a fan of your music since you put out your first I, song. I remember. I remember when you followed me. It was like two two years ago, I think. Yeah. It's, I mean, like it's been a, a while. Two years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, now we're here meeting in person. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. It's exciting. Finally. But anyways, how are you? I'm good. I'm great. What did, where are you coming from? What did you do today? Um, I woke up. I went to a workout at 9 a.m. with okay. my trainer. Shout out to Mario. Ooh. Flex Fitness. Um, I worked out. Um, after that, I went home. I made a protein shake. I took a shower. And then after that, I was picking out outfits for Vegas. Because I'm going to Vegas this weekend. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to… It's my first time going to Vegas. Ever. Ever, right? It's my first time going to a club. Ever. I, ever. Oh my gosh. Because I turned 21 during a pandemic. So oh. couldn't do that. And then it's also I'm doing a club uh, appearance with the DJs at the club Ooh. that I'm be at. Yeah. Wait, what so, DJ? Or um, what club? The Dew Twins. Okay. Um, th- the club is um, the Encore Beach Club at the Wynn Hotel. All right. If you guys want to sponsor us, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Hook us up with some discounted rooms. <laughs> yeah. Please. That's awesome. But yeah. So um, I just… Found a fit in my closet um, for for Vegas, and then um, I came here. It took me like forty five minutes to get here. Thank you for for tra- that's quite a trip. No, bro, it's fine. I mean, we outside, so like traffic is hectic. Yeah, but it's okay. Yeah, I'm happy that yeah. we're alive and open. <laughs> I'm I'm so excited for you to also go to Vegas for the first time. Thank what you. like what is your expectation? What are things that you are absolutely doing that like what like you must have the biggest hopes, dreams, and aspirations for Vegas? Mm-hmm. What are you hoping for? I'm hoping to get up okay and um i think just the vibes all around because my friends have always told me vegas is not fun unless you're 21 so Mm. i was like you know what there's no need for me to go to vegas like when i was younger i'm like i'm gonna wait till i'm 21 so i've always had these like hopes and expectations of vegas just to obviously be just obviously the party life i love to party i love music i love people (laughs) i love crowds like i just love just Turning up, with, yeah. you know, and especially if the people around you are tight and like they'll they'll dance with you, you know, things like that. Um, but I've never been in a club, so I don't really know what to expect. Yo, so, have fun. I'm like excited you. for you. Thank I'm you. not even going, <laughs> but I'm excited for you. Damn. Like thank you. Live your best life. Do what you gotta I'm, do. I am gonna do what I gotta do. I plan on staying up till like 6 a.m. <laughs> and um getting breakfast and then going to sleep, waking up at like 12 and then checking out and then having another day. Is it is it just one day? Yeah. That you're doing one day? I mean, one day. I have to. It's work. Like if it was up to me, I would stay a whole weekend. Just stay another day. I'm thinking about I don't know. I don't know. We'll see, but I don't have a booked returning flight back yet. So, we'll see about that. All righty. Well, <laughs> All right. you're going to have to come back and let us know how Vegas went for you. I will. I really will. Um, I'm re- I'm really excited to hear. <laughs> 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 All right. So today really we're going to get to know you a little bit better. I think… Yeah. Well, I don't really know you very well. I know your music. I know, you know, 
you put music stuff out and you do cool things. But like… But the people who don't know the backstory… Like myself… We're going to dive deeper into your life. I love that. So… We're going to start… Just very simply with your birthday. September 13th, 1999. Team Virgo, baby. Virgo. Team Virgo. Virgo. And think? I am… What do you think? Um, I have two guesses. Okay. Like, the first guess that came to my, my mind was a Sagittarius. Okay. And the second is? Um, maybe a… Hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. Study, study whatever you need to study. I'm just kind of going to go off vibes. Uh, I would say… Well, my least favorite signs are a Taurus and a Gemini. Okay. So, if, I know you're not those. I can already just tell. But I think… Are you a Leo? I'm not. Are you closer to that? I don't know anything. Are so you a I, Cancer? No. What are you? <laughs> I'm a Scorpio. Okay. My best friend's a Scorpio. Uh, okay. All right. When's see. your birthday? November 17th. Oh, okay. All right. I don't know nobody with that birthday. I'm I'm okay with Scorpios. I like yeah. Y'all. Yeah, we can get you guys along. Are tied. Yeah, because like Virgos are most are most compatible with Scorpios. Oh that's, really? Yeah, that's like the first like yeah. Well, there we go. It's amazing. We got it. Love this is going to be a good one. All right. <laughs> um. So let's start with this. You were born and raised in Lodi. 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 Okay. Explain this to me. I've never heard of this place before. Okay. Uh, forgive my ignorance. Put on for your hometown real quick. Where is Lodi, California? So Lodi, California is in the valley, obviously, of Northern California. Um, I say that it's about 40 minutes away from Sacramento. Okay. Um, or if people know where Stockton is, I'm right next to Stockton. My city is right next to Stockton. And if they still don't know Sacramento or Stockton, <laughs> I say it's about an hour and a half from the bay, but more like strictly in the valley. It's not the bay area. Okay. It's in the valley. Um, my hometown is known for its wine. Um, we have a lot of vineyards and uh, vineyards, vineyards, and um, fields. And there's wine tasting. There's a lot of um, wineries. All right. Um, I used to work at one of them. Oh, hey. um, yeah, there's wineries. So people usually just travel like around NorCal. Like they'll go to Napa and then they'll go to Lodi to you okay. know just taste wine yeah. and stuff like that. So yeah, my hometown's known for its wine. That's cool. Yeah. And it's cool because like when I go to like different states and stuff, like one time I went to New York and like one of the bottles of wine they were serving at the restaurant I was at was from Lodi. Oh. So it's tight. It's like all over the place. Even in Europe one time. I'm going to have to try it out. Yeah. Yeah, you should. I, I, don't, I don't think I'm very familiar with my wines, but… Me uh, neither. I don't like wine, but you know… What's your drink of choice? Oh, just liquor. <laughs> <laughs> I like tequila. Like I like some good tequila like on the rocks with yeah. like some lime uh -huh. like I, that I can just sip. Uh-huh. Um, but if like we're talking seltzers, I'm I'm just a white claw bitch, really. Just okay. I just love white claw. Yeah. All it's right. really good. All right, white claw. Let her I, I <laughs> dude, I've tweeted white claw so many times. I need a sponsorship. Well, I mean, maybe it's not good if I get if I get a sponsorship, <laughs> but I just want like unlimited white claws for like, okay. the rest of my life. So but but <laughs> your liquor of choice would be tequila. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tequila. All right. Yeah, like the Sounds good, good, expensive. Like tequila. Casamigos. No, we're going or like we're higher. Going Clase Azul. Okay. Um, or like, like up, Don up. Julio. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. I see. I got your vibe now. All right. Go. Yeah. Um, yeah. do you have any siblings? I do. I have an older sister. Uh -huh. She's thirty-four. Okay. Um, and she has two kids: my niece and my nephew. My niece is thirteen, and my nephew is five. Wow. My niece is actually turning fourteen like next week. That's so you're closer to your niece and your <laughs> your no damn sister near. In, yeah, damn near. In yeah, age. like my sister. Obviously, is a lot older than me, so we have a huge age gap. Yeah. Um, my sister had my niece when I was eight years old. Wow. And so, my we raised like me and my parents. Like <laughs> I was eight. What am I talking about raising my niece? <laughs> but my parents, my my sister lived with us, uh -huh. and so my parents helped raise my raise my niece. So yeah. I was around her growing up. I seen her grow up, and like she's kind of like like a little sister to me because of I feel just how that, close though. we are. Yeah. I mean, like my youngest brother, we're eight years apart, and mm -hmm. I I say this and like I raised you. Mm -hmm. Like you're eight. I was like, yeah, but like it's just. It's almost… It's closer to 10 years and it is like 4 years right. or 5 years. Right. So it's like… I still wiped your butt. <laughs> Damn near. My sister would have me change her diapers. Yeah. Like… I'm like, girl, I don't even know how to hold a baby. And you're making me… <laughs> you're About making to me drop do all your this. newborn but you want me to do what? <laughs> that's like… <laughs> oh my god. But yeah. That's my little family tree. Okay. So it's… <laughs> it was you, your sister, your niece, uh, and your nephew now. My nephew, and your parents yeah. in Lodi. Mm -hmm. um, what, was, what was family life like growing up? Like what was life? I honestly was just… I'm just super happy with my childhood. Yeah. Um, I love the way I was raised, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up, obviously, in a small town. And, like, I did sports. What'd um, you play? 
I played softball and right. I did basketball. Um, I played softball for nine years. Oh, geez. so I was I was pretty serious. So you're like pretty much pro. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. Um, but I, that was like my favorite sport. Like I, I always wanted I always wanted to play softball all the time. Um, but yeah, so I did sports. I was raised in that that church family. You mm-hmm. know, home. I was at church every day. Um, my my parents were in the ministry, so oh, wow. my dad was the worship leader. My mom sang in the choir. Um, my dad was a youth pastor at one point. So I was at church like every day because yeah. of like band practices, prayer meetings, things like that. Yeah. I was thrown in the kids' churches. I was thrown in all the kids' activities, the kids, you know, camps and stuff. Um, so that was literally my whole life. Um, and then growing up, I mean, you know, I went to school. I, I had friends, my whole neighborhood. Like I had, I was friends with every kid in every house on my street. Mm. So when all the kids were able to play, it was a function out there. And there was a lot of us. You're like, gather around. around, children. Let's yeah, go. Dude, it was so fun. Like, I literally just loved the house that I grew up in uh-huh. that my family still lives in now, mm-hmm. which is dope. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I just lived a pretty easy childhood. I yeah. got into music when I was 10. Um, I think what, what got you into music? It was definitely church. I yeah. think church… Well, church definitely had a lot to do with me and, and finding my interest in music. I've always… I've always was interested in music, like just with the way that that music sounded, different instruments, like the drums, the piano, the guitar, the bass, the trumpet, like our worship band had like every instrument. We had percussion, we had bongos, we had like everything, tambourines, everything. So I was always just going up there and just helping myself, you know, like after Sunday service or whatever. Um, But I always gravitated towards drums first. Mm -hmm. So my parents like bought me like a drum set And I was able to bang on the drums. And when I was too little to have a drum set, I remember my parents giving me pots and pans, like cooking pots and pans. And they would set like five around me and they give me two spoons. And I would bang the pots and pans on the floor. So that was like my my drum set in my mind. And then I think I was like five or six when I got my first like little tiny drum set from Walmart. (laughs) That's fun. Yeah. Um, I mean, I grew up in the church as well. Mm. And I think that's probably where I… Probably like quote unquote practice singing the most because you're just mm-hmm. in, in service every week. You're just singing. Mm-hmm. But do you remember like any certain songs that like stick out to you that are like? Yeah, we the- sang a lot of Hill song. So yeah. we sang a lot of Hill song. <laughs> I think um, the main song that I can think of at the top of my head was it was Hill song and you know Jesus Culture. Yeah. Yeah, of course. So Jesus Culture, Happy Day. I sang mm. that all the time. I sang How He Loves all the time. Hill song, I would sing like um, like Scandal of Grace. I would mm. sing um, Take It All. That's like an take, early two- take, take it all. Yep, it's like early two thousands Hill song. Um, there's a lot, but I I like had to like study music. Yeah. You know, like, study Christian music first. Like yeah. without you know, I didn't dive into secular music till I was older. But uh-huh. my first you know time grasping onto music was my the Christian stuff. What what kind of um- I guess it's interesting. Like whenever I see like kids or friends who are like parents are in the ministry or like… There's always like people who are like… Yeah, faith and religion is part of my life. And people who just like have the complete opposite reaction. It's like I don't want anything to do with this. Right. Um, for whatever reason it mm-hmm. may be. How do you relate to religion and spirituality mm-hmm. and Christianity mm-hmm. now as like an adult? Man, I, I still claim it. When yeah. people ask me like… Like how's your relationship with God? And I'm like it's tight. Like, yeah. You know, I I do believe like obviously God is everywhere. Yeah. So um, I always know, you know, like ever since ever since I moved to LA, I never like it was just two years ago. It wasn't in my routine or my schedule to go to church, just because growing up, like I was going to church every Sunday. Mm-hmm. Like my parents split up when I was sixteen, so I thought I could get away with skipping a Sunday. You know what I mean? <laughs> but they're like, no, like this is still required. Yeah. You go to church, yeah. whatever. So when I moved out, I was like, I'm going to sleep in on Sunday. Yeah. You know? like So I was like, but I, I'm going to keep my relationship tight with God. And, yeah. and you know, I, I pray every day mm-hmm. still. There's there's like, it's literally part of my schedule and part of my life. Like, yeah. I can't go to sleep at night. Like, before I go to bed, I'm like, did I pray today? No, I didn't. I'll pray now. Yeah, You know what I mean? So I… Everything good that comes in my life or any doors that open, it's automatic. Like, yeah, I know this is from God. I know yeah. this is from 
him opening these doors for me to do this. Like even just like this podcast, you know, like this is probably going to get, you know, me a lot of new viewers and a lot of new supporters. So it's like the little opportunities like this is like, I know this is, you know, part of his plan, you know? Yeah. So that never goes out of recognition, yeah. you know? So, um, yeah. That's awesome. He's, yeah. That's awesome, I, I owe it all. Yeah. And I hope that you never lose that. For sure. Um, just because I know like, I think like as, this is from my personal experience, like it's so easy to see people, including myself sometimes, who just lose sight of that. Who mm-hmm. lose sight of religion or whatever it is that you believe in. And it, it, at a certain point, it's like, I did this. I mm-hmm. made this happen. But for me, I've always been very vocal. It's like, I didn't do it. There's no logical reason that I should have the job that I have, that I should be making the music that I'm making mm-hmm. and having like, quote unquote, the success that I've had. Mm-hmm. And for me, the only thing that it points back to is God. Mm-hmm. That's like the only way I can make mm-hmm. sense of it. Mm-hmm. And for some people, it's such like a foreign concept. But for me, that's the only way that it Exactly. It I know. I know. I've, I've had commun- like communications with people that like, they're just like, oh, like, I don't even believe that stuff no more. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, because it, I mean, it doesn't make sense. It really doesn't. Like everything that's in the Bible, they're like, nah, like, I don't really believe in the Bible. Like I just was raised in church and was forced to believe it. But like, I'm like, man, like it is hard to believe, you know, the Bible, the stories are just so hard to believe, mm-hmm. but it's like, I believe it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I believe in the Bible. I believe, you know, that Jesus died for our sins and mm-hmm. I'm going to stick with that yeah. forever. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's where I stand. <laughs> it's like, and that is it. We <laughs> and that claimed is it. it. After I just talked about what I'm going to do in Vegas this weekend. <laughs> oh, God. Mom and dad, please don't ever listen to this. Uh, uh, no, uh, my, uh, my parents would appreciate that. Because my dad honesty. be having conversations with me, like, like asking me, so, um, how often do you talk to God? He yeah. literally just asked me this, like, a month ago. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, dad. I got this. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I just don't want you shoving it down my throat, but don't worry. It's yeah. good. No, I feel, I mean, yeah. I don't think that ever changes. Even at, you know, in my age of 30 something, my mom and dad all the time is like, so you pray, mm-hmm. you go to church. I'm mm-hmm. like, parents don't change. That's just, it's just in, that's, that's they in their really nature. don't. I really thought it did. Like once I moved out, I'm like, no, no they're going to let me do my thing. They aren't going to ask any questions. <laughs> I'm my own person now. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And it's, and it's uh, gonna stay like yo. This. At least you know now earlier, right? Than yeah. like, but uh, that's great. I mean, when it comes to uh, like your parents, you mentioned like they separated when you were sixteen. Did that have any sort of? How did that affect you uh, as well? Did that like really badly? Yeah. Um, Sorry, I, that was such like a, a out of left no, field question. No, it's but, okay because like I talk about this all the time, uh-huh. so it's like I'm already like I've built the barrier of yeah. I'm able to talk about it. Yeah, you know. Um, but yeah, obviously it, it was hurtful. That was probably like, like when I was a kid, I was never sad. I was never depressed. I didn't have like anxiety or, or anything like that. Cause I just, I had friends and I had like a good childhood. Um, but that was the point in my life that broke me and I was depressed. I was blaming everything on God and I blamed my sadness and everything on God. Cause I was just like, yo, like why are you breaking our family apart? Like we, like we weren't a perfect family, but we were okay. You know what I mean? Like we were okay. And um, the way that the divorce went down was just really rough in itself. And I felt betrayed, you know, as a daughter and my mom, you know, felt betrayed by her husband and along with my sister too. So obviously like that broke us and I was young. So I knew that my parents' relationship, like marriage was like never perfect, but they tried to stick it out for, you know, me. And uh, my sister was already old, you know, she, not old, sorry, older. (laughs) So she already had like, she already had kids, you know, she had like a boyfriend at the time. So they all lived in a house together. So it was literally just me. Like I felt like the only child because we were in just separate parts of our lives. And um, I didn't feel like I had anybody to go to. Like I could talk to my friends, but I'm like, you're, your family's perfect. Like your parents are rich. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, my parents aren't rich. You know, it was just a different level of like vulnerability that I, that I could have with my friends. Yeah. So my parents tried to stick it out and I could tell that their marriage was getting toxic. And, um, they believed that at the time that divorce wasn't an option, you know, like death shall do us part, you know? So they tried to stick it out. But when my parents told me, I was just like, okay, I kind of seen this coming, but this is real. This is happening now. Oh my God. It like hit me like a, yeah. t- like a ton of bricks. Yeah. And so 
I was like, so who's moving out? Like, who's keeping the house? My mom was like, I'm keeping the house. My dad moved out. And it hit me when my dad moved out. And like, I walked in the room and his stuff wasn't there. Yeah. Or like, if I pulled up outside of my house, his car wasn't there. It was moments like that that triggered me. And I'm like, crap, my dad's not here. You yeah. know? So I um, obviously was doing the back and forth thing for a little bit. But I wasn't really feeling comfortable in my dad's house. And I think it's just because… It's mama bear. You know, you, you want to stick with your mom. You feel bad for leaving your mom. And so I was like, I'm going to I'm going to live with my mom. So I chose to live with my mom. And um, at that time, my mom lost her job. Mm. And um, my mom, it was really hard for her to get jobs at places. And I was 16. And so I was like, man, like, I wish I could. do. No, I was I was 15 when they like separated. But legally, they were divorced when I was 16, like okay. by law. So 15 yeah. was when this was all happening. Okay. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't even work. I can't even find any place that'll give me money so I can help my mom get us milk. Like, and bread in our house, you know? Yeah. So we almost lost the house. We almost lost our car. Sheesh. We didn't have food. Like, we literally, like my, sis- like my sisters, my mom's sisters, my aunts, they were all filling our cupboards with groceries. Like they were all paying for everything, paying for my mom's car payments, paying for the mortgage. And my mom was like, I'll try to find a way to pay all back. But financially, we were screwed. Even though I knew that my dad had his job and he had money, I was like, no, if my mom's suffering and my mom's not going to eat dinner tonight, I'm not going to eat dinner tonight. Like Mm. that's effed up. You know what I mean? Like if I'm going to go to my dad's house and have a good dinner and then come home, my mom's like hasn't even ate. That's fucked up. Yeah. So I'm like, no, I'm I'm writing this out. You know? So, um, yeah, we were broke as hell and we were doing everything we could, like recycling cans. Mm. Um, uh, what else were we doing? My mom was pawning her old jewelry, mm. selling her old rings and her old bracelets that she had when she was younger. Yeah. Literally, we were trying everything, dude. Yeah. Like selling stuff, garage sales, everything. Yeah. And um, so we went, we went through some hard um, but then eventually a few months down the line happened. Um I start busking and and I start kind of getting like open mic jobs. And um, I was able to, you know, throw like my guitar case out and people would throw in like dollar bills and stuff. I was getting some church gigs with my dad um, and I was getting paid for that. So I was trying to help my mom as much as I could. So that's when I started like really pressing into music and also started songwriting was because I I hit rock bottom in my life. And I was like, I need I need help. I need something to do. So I would just write it down on paper and sing along with my guitar. and make a song like that. Um, but yeah, so I was, I was helping my mom. My mom was actually able to find a job within that time. And, um, it, you know, it got us kind of slowly back up on our feet. Mm -hmm. Um, but it took us like, honestly, like two years to, Mm. to be okay. Like when I was 18, it, it literally took us two years until we felt like, okay, I think we're okay again. This is the new normal, you know? So, yeah. Man, um, I'm so sorry to hear like you had to go through so much at such a young age. But yeah, if anything, I feel like I've only known you a short time, but it feels like it's created such like a powerful young hurricane of a woman mm. in you, which mm. is, you know, again, in many ways, God's plan yeah. uh, in so many ways. Yeah. So um, in ter- two, two follow-up questions on that. Like, is this when you were working like three jobs simultaneously as well? Like, yeah. So you were doing… Yeah, I left that out. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, well, um, 16, 16, 17 was music only. 17, I graduated high school and I was like, all right, I need money or my parents are going to make me go to school. Yeah. I don't want to go to school. So I knew a friend that worked at Starbucks and I was like, hey girl, I'm like, hook it up with a job. I, I need a job. I had, And then, um, so I got the job like two weeks before I turned 18, uh-huh. you know, 17. So I worked at Starbucks for about four and a half five months. Um, and then on top of that, I was like, I want another job on the weekends because I was just part time at Starbucks. So I got a job at a winery and uh-huh. I was a waitress and I worked for like events and like weddings and stuff. So I was like busting people's tables and things yeah. like that. So I was just the cleanup person. Okay. After y'all slobs. <laughs> um, <laughs> All y'all nasty people. All y'all people. nasty people freaking spitting out their chew in their cup. Like I was literally going to say that as a joke, but I just imagine people actually No, really it was real. It. Like it was real. It was disgusting. But yeah. I was that. And then my dad, he has his own 
like business in um, optometry and like hearing aids. So my dad oh, like, okay. fits hearing aids on people and things like that. So his front desk reception is quit at the time. And uh, my dad was like, hey, you want to be the front desk receptionist? I'm like, boy, I hate talking to people on the phone. <laughs> I, and I'm going to have to put on this business voice like and book, Hello. and book appointments for these old people. Like, oh my gosh. So and I was like, yeah, dad, sure. I'll do it. But he was he was paying me good too, and so yeah. I was like on top of three jobs. I was like, oh my god, I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna be good. So I did that for a long time. On top of that, working with stereotypes. So I was Sheesh. I had so much going on in my life. Oh my god! But I was always going back and forth. So I was trying to live out my dream in L.A. and then drive back home, and I'm back to that nine to five. How okay? Oh my god! <laughs> I know, I know. I'm so sorry. There's no. Just, my life is just crazy. It's. I mean. <laughs> Lot to lot to digest here. So you're doing all these jobs. You're trying to get your mom and yourself back to a better place. You started busking on top of all these jobs, right? Where were you busking? Just anywhere. Santa Monica. Santa Monica. Yeah. Um, and that's how you made some little. How did you get connected with the stereotypes? Stereotypes all originated from church and home. The My drummer, gosh. yeah, the drummer that was in our worship team at the time. <clears throat> Sorry. Um. Moves to LA because he wants to be a producer. So in the meantime, he got an internship at the st- at the studio where Stereotypes worked out of. So he was an intern. And at the time, I was posting YouTube videos as well. I was just trying to get, you know, like a nice social and a nice following on YouTube and Instagram, things like that. So I was just posting covers. So I posted a cover of Location by Khalid. And he seen it. His name's Zach. Zach seen it and was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to show the stereotypes. So he showed the stereotypes and they're like, whoa, like, She's really dope. She's from Lodi. Because most of the stereotypes, they're from Sacramento and some of them from the Bay. So it's like they knew where Lodi was. So they're like, oh, wow. Like she's from Lodi. That's crazy. We should meet her. You know? So Zach gets in contact with my mom. And like, hey, like there's these guys with stereotypes. They want to meet Destiny. And at the time, we were just like, eh, I don't know. Because at least for me, I was just so independent and in my zone. I was like investing in myself. I was buying myself like my own equipment. Um, like to just record and write from home. like like buying the softwares and the instruments and things like that. Cause I wanted to make sure like I could find my sound on my own. I don't want, I didn't want no one messing that up for me. So at the time I was like, "Ah." I was like, let's do some research on these guys. Cause I've never heard of them. So I looked them up and I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, they did. That's what I like by Bruno. And that was my favorite song at the time. And I was like, oh my gosh, mom, like, look, they did this. Oh, they did somebody to to love by Justin Bieber. I'm like, bro, I'm the biggest Bieber fan. I was like, it's lit. We going, we going to LA, (laughs) you know? Yeah. So my mom was like, all right, we'll go. But we're bringing your aunts. And I was like, okay, let's do it. I have a lot of aunts. I have <laughs> five aunts. Oh, wow. Yeah. From just my mom's side. So we bring… It's my, it's me. It's my mom. And my Aunt Aurora. My Aunt Vicky. My, and my <laughs> Aunt Ronnie. The whole family. And my Aunt Ronnie. Yeah. We left a couple <laughs> sisters at home. But… <laughs> I left yeah, a couple of my aunts at okay. home. But yeah. So we literally… We all went. So I pulled up to this… Big recording studio. I've never been in… Like I've never been in like a professional studio. Is it like the that one before. that's like blacked out all over on the outside? That one? No. This is… In, the studio was in Santa Monica too actually. Oh really? But okay. it was like… It so was like… Is, okay. On top of a nail salon. Oh. Yeah. It's like one of those joints. So yeah. Like we pulled up and then there's like plaques on the wall. I was like, all right. I'm like, they've done some work in their day. I'm like, all right. It's tight. So we we'll walk in and I meet, I meet all these grown ass men. And I had my guitar with me, and they're like, "Hey, they're can you, big can dudes you sing? too." They're, I mean, I some of them are like bigger dudes. Yeah, you're right. No. Yeah, you know what? Charm. One of them is he, like he's eight big. Feet. Germ is big. Yeah, I feel like a dwarf sometimes. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm like, hi. I feel like an elf. I'm like, yeah. Hello, I'm Dobby. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh my god, they're gonna get a crack out of this when they hear that. Um, but yeah, so I. Sang some songs for them, and I played some stuff that I've worked on from from home. Uh-huh. Um, and they were like, "All right, cool. Like it was great to meet you." And I'm like, "Okay, cool, whatever." So we end up leaving on the way home. Literally on the drive home, we get a call from Jeremy, and he was like, "Hey, like we we want to work with Destiny. We think she's really talented. Like, when can she come back? We want to like dedicate a whole week of just working with her." Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Mom, I'll I'll go back next week. I swear. Like I'll go back because it, it was literally like a month." Before I was graduating high school. So oh, I was like, okay. bro, I got to I gotta press in and make sure I can't go to college or nothing. So um, yeah, sure enough, like my, my mom was just like, okay, yeah, like she'll come back next month. So my mom let me like borrow her car and drive it down. It's about a five-hour drive with like, I would drive it down to LA and I would stay 
there for a week working with them. First time working with songwriters and first time even just being in a session and having people collaborate. It yeah. was weird because I'm yeah. just used to writing in my room by myself. Right. So it was new and it was an adjustment. But I'm like, yo, this is so fun. Mm -hmm. You know, so we started kind of getting a little like foundation going and a little like sound going. Yeah. And um, they invited me back again. They're like, hey, can you come back next month? And I'm like, yeah. And so I came back again the next month, then the next month, then the next month. So by then we were like, yo, we have like, we have like a single. Yeah. You know, like we, you know, like they, they offered, you know, like, you know, to, to sign me. So that's what I ended up doing. I signed to Stereotypes when I was 18. And then um, we went to different record labels, you know, just trying to shop and we ended up landing with RCA. So signed to RCA and did a joint venture. Now it's Beach Wave Sound. So I'm Beach Wave Sound's first artist. And um, it's been a, a crazy fun journey. We put out Tomboy, which is my first ever single. Yeah. Led off with that. And now it's like my most, you know, my, I would say it's my hit, you know. It's, big, yeah, um, big so it's, it's a big record. Yeah. So um, led off with Tomboy. Dropped my first EP in 2019. I got, I got to tour. I got to do festivals, a bunch of shows, everything like that. So 2019 was, uh, was a dream. And then Sheesh. 2020 it up. Yeah. <laughs> For real 2020. I'm looking at you. Yeah, I'm just getting started again. Like, I feel like I'm starting from the beginning. Yeah. I like, feel I, like that's I feel tough. so like, such like a little artist. I'm like, no, like I've been in the game. Yeah, but. I feel like that's like the tough thing for a lot of up and coming artists. People who were just getting started 2019, 2020. And then like, it put everything on hold. Bro, I know. I feel so bad for like the artists that like, signed like beginning of 2020. Like well, in like January. They've just been like sitting there. Yeah. All of them, they haven't done anything. It's just tough. It's so tough. What's up, everybody? This week's episode of the Dead Box Show is brought to you by our sponsor, BetterHelp. Now, you guys have heard me talk about BetterHelp so many times, but it's because I think having somebody to talk to about whatever it is you're going through in life is incredibly important. Depression, stress, work issues, relationships, anxiety, sleeping issues, trauma, anger, the list goes on and on and on because we are complex as humans and as individuals, and we should be able, and we should, process them in a healthy way. One way to do that is by doing it with a counselor, a licensed professional therapist. And that's where BetterHelp comes into the picture. BetterHelp.com has licensed counselors who are specialists in a bunch of different areas of conversation and, and I guess life. And you can have weekly video or phone sessions from the comfort of your home that are completely safe, private, confidential, and uh, you can start communicating in under 24 hours. It's not self-help. It is professional counseling. So I want you to start living a happier life today. And as a listener, you're going to get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash kpop. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash kpop. Now back to our show. Everything about... Even the way you speak and your career and like your life, it just feels like so, <sighs> like just spills out and overflows. Perfect way to express it. Like it overflows. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I just, I just had a, an image of in my mind of like when you got to LA to meet the stereotypes. It's like you and all your aunties walking into the studio and <laughs> just like. I remember it so clearly. I remember what I was wearing. I remember everything. Oh man. That's but that's such a that's a cool story. Um, but I, I guess what I'm curious of is like, was music always something you wanted to do? Was this a dream? Like, clearly you had it somewhere in the back of your head because you were getting your own equipment and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. But like, was there a moment where you're like, I want to be a singer, I want yes. to be a performer? Yeah. When was that? What was that? Um, ten years old, Justin Bieber. Mm. <laughs> Justin Bieber really like. I haven't I haven't ever been so inspired by someone before. Yeah. Like Justin Bieber just like topped it off for me and I'm like holy crap like he's who I want to be. He's mm. who I want to be like. He plays guitar so let me learn how to play guitar. That's how I learned how to play guitar. Sheesh. Was watching him play guitar and I watched his fingers, I watched his strumming and um that's how I learned how to play. Like literally I was just copying his videos on YouTube. And then um I was like I need to try to start singing too. So I started singing. I started singing Demi Lovato, Cheetah Girls, Miley Cyrus, <laughs> Jonas Brothers, you know, the whole Disney, the whole Disney yeah. squad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I was singing like Vanessa Hutchins and stuff. So I was I was in my bag. Um, but I 
I think I knew that I was kind of good when me and my friends, like I said, like I had a lot of friends in my neighborhood. So like every like Sunday night, we would play American Idol. And my dad had a pickup truck at the time. Uh So me and like six of my friends would sit in a circle in the back of my dad's bed Uh of his truck. And I had my guitar and I was like, I only know how to play four songs. One Time by Justin Bieber. (laughs) Get Back by Demi Lovato. I was like, I only know how to play these. Party in the USA. I was like, I only know how to play these. So y'all pick your poison. So literally we would we would all sing. And when it was my turn, it's like everyone would just shut up and just kind of like, just watch me. And I and I was singing. I'm like, man, I know I'm killing this shit right now. <laughs> I was going in, right? And so killing it for these five people so, in the back of my dash truck. <laughs> I know. So I started just like learning and, and just tapping in. And my friend had a flip cam. You remember yeah. those flip yeah, cams? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My friend had one. And he was like, Destiny, like you should start your own YouTube channel like Justin. Like you need to do this and kind of like acting like a manager. And I was like, say less. I was like, you film it for me. He goes, all right, you can film it at my house because my parents didn't know that I was doing this. Mm. So I went to my friend's house and we sang. I sang You Smile by Justin Bieber. I was 10 years old. The video is still up to this day if y'all want to search and dig it up. Um, I sang it and I posted it on YouTube. And then… I ran across the street. I ran back to my my parents' house and I'm like, mom, dad, I'm on the internet. They're like, what? What do you what do you mean? And I was like, I'm on YouTube. Look. And then they just tapped in my name and the video popped up. And That's they're like, so what? Cool. They're, and they listened and I'm playing the video. And that was like their first time ever hearing me sing and really? play guitar. And um, like literally, they were like, Whoa, like you're on key. Yeah. You're not pitchy. Like this sing. is crazy. Yeah. So obviously my dad's like, yes. Yes, my daughter's a, my daughter can sing, you know. So the my dad got all excited, dad, yeah. and so my dad's like, "You need to sing in church. Like, you need to start singing in church." And I was like, "No, no, no!" I was like, "I don't want to sing. Like, I don't want to sing yet." I was like, "I'll play guitar though." So my dad put me on, and I started playing guitar like in church first, and then when I was twelve was when I started getting comfortable behind a mic, and so I uh-huh. stepped up and started singing in church. Man, that's so that's yeah. such a cute but also real story in so many ways. Just like. Yeah, I, I, you would play American Idol growing up. I would play <laughs> Kill the Ant Pile where we would just like pour water on ants. Oh my pile. God, you're so mean. I just… I just it's did, hilarious. There's so many ants everywhere. I was like, I don't like these ants. I get it. Like um, it. So I guess like since you've moved to LA. So you moved to LA what? Two and a half, three years ago now you said? Um, tw- January 2019. So 2019. Look, two and a half years. Two and a half years. years. Um, and in that time, obviously a lot of things have happened. We had 2020. We'll just cancel out. Um, but <laughs> life sucks. You've been life sucked. Yeah, in 2020. <laughs> you've been releasing music. You've been you've already done some touring stuff. You're doing cool gigs here and there. How has it been? Like this is all in some ways it can feel like a long time, but also in many ways it is pretty still new. Mm-hmm. Um, what has it been like for you to to be a quote unquote musician and making this your full time job and living? It's obviously a blessing, man. Yeah, I think just me. Coming from a small town in general, it's like I love just repping where I'm from. Uh-huh. I love repping the West Coast. I, I obviously, you know, didn't come from anything. I didn't come from money or there was no handouts. There yeah. was no, no nothing. This is all from, from the dirt up. Like I went through the trenches to get to where I am and I'm still not even to where I want to be. Yeah. You know, but it's just, I'm, I'm super grateful and it feels good that, you know, <laughs> God gave me a gift to just, Share, shed a light in this world. And, yeah. and I feel like music is just so powerful and can help so many people in any situations. That's how I got through my yeah. what I went through was because of music. I went to music. I ran to music. And if I can, you know, make music and write music that can help somebody, like that I feel like that's why God put me here was yeah. to help people yeah. and just share my music with the world and meet my supporters and yeah. meet, you know, people and and impact people really. Yeah. So being a musician is so fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. And, <laughs> and I, I love that I can do it every day as well and I talk think, about it. I think what's also cool is like you've at, even at such a young age, you've had so many different life experiences. Yeah. Um, from family, but also like working and all those different jobs that you've had. Yeah, bro. I know. Everything. So I, I feel like you have probably so many different angles and perspectives to sing about and to write about and mm-hmm. to create. Mm-hmm. Um, about I want to go back just a little bit when you were mentioning about like more about like your mental health of when you said you went fell into like a depression. Mm-hmm. 
Well, how did that manifest itself for you? Like, what did that look? I feel like it looks different for different people. Yeah. Um, I honestly think that… I talk about God a lot. But I'm going to bring him up again. But yeah. I really feel like there's this quote that says… God gives his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers. Mm. I truly believe that, you know, God or, you know, whoever people's beliefs are, you know, you're put through disasters like that to to get through it. And mm-hmm. on the other side, you're you're grown. You know what I yeah, mean? It's yeah, like yeah. it's like if I I'm mean, real, if I didn't go through that, if I didn't know what it was like to hit rock bottom and be broke yeah. and know what it's like to not eat or sleep at night, it's like I would probably be a whole different person. Yeah. And that's why like I I always remind myself that I I got to remember where I'm from. I got to remember the life that I went through. I got to remember to be humble and stay humble. Yeah. You know, so those are just like my my three key points that I follow because of literally the depression I went through. Yeah. And I'm grateful that I had outlets. Like I had skateboarding, I had uh-huh. sports, I had music and um that got me through it. And even 2020, I went through an, another tough part of my life. And I feel like everybody did. Obviously, yeah. it hit everybody in any different type of ways. So 2020, I kind of felt like I was going through the same shit again. Uh-huh. And I grew up. And I feel like literally within a year, I'm like a whole new person now. Mm. So I really feel like you got to hit rock bottom in your life to come out stronger. Yeah. That's just all I'm saying. Yeah. That's, that's like… That's… Pretty much the answer there. Yeah. So if you, <laughs> yeah. I mean, for anybody who's listening, if you're going through rock bottom, yeah. If you're going through rock bottom, like you're supposed to be where you're at. Like I know it, it sucks to hear that, but you are supposed to be there and watch and wait until you get through that and see how much of a stronger person you are. Mm. For real. Amen. I believe that. Amen. I believe that. I believe that. <laughs> um, I want to. I want to ask you the last few questions, and then we're going to do like some fan questions. You've had your fair share of exposure to K-pop, it seems. Yes. Um, and… I know where this is going. Yes. You know where <laughs> this is going. Tell me about your exposure to K-pop. I mean, you've worked with B.I. Yeah. There are rumors that uh, you're working with Mark, mm. Tuan. Uh, there is some interaction with you and Lisa. Like, what is going on? Explain this okay. to me. I'm just going to tell the, you from the beginning. Let's go. Me. So, the start with K-pop. I've been a fan of Blackpink since… Like 2019. I'm going to be real. Um, my niece actually put me on to K-pop. That's, just K-pop in general. Because yeah. my my niece only listened to K-pop. Like like Jay Park. Mark. Like GOT7. Um, Blackpink in general. So my niece would put me on. I'm like, what is this you're listening to? Yeah. I'm like, because this isn't like… Like the stuff that I would think you, like you'd be listening She's to. She's like you know? what? Nine or ten at the time? She, yeah. She was, she was about nine. Nine or ten. Yeah. And… She would always play like the like Blackpink's music videos on TV, and I'm like, "What the f- is this?" I'm like, <laughs> "This is crazy!" Like the K- K-pop like music videos are insane. They're ridiculous. Ridiculous. So yeah. I'm like, "Yo, what is this masterpiece?" I'm like, "Holy crap!" So I started pressing in, and I was like, "Man, like this is dope." And um, um, cat, my bestie over there, she's also a K-pop stan. <laughs> K-pop stan. So she was like, "Oh no, yeah, like." Like, this is K-pop. Like, this is how, like, you know, what Korean artists have to go through to, like, get established. Yeah. Like, it takes them years. I, I had no idea. I did not know the logistics. And, yeah, yeah, And yeah. so, she was the one that kind of, like, um, like, informed me and was just kind of like, yo, like, yeah, like, they have to do this. They have to dance. They have to do this. Like, I'm like, holy crap. It's like a freaking, like, you're going into the <laughs> army or something. Like training for this, you yeah. know? It's literally like training. And so I'm like, wow. Like, so that obviously just like boosted my respect for every every K-pop artist. So <clears throat> fast forward a couple years. Um, we get to top of this year in February. And like I said, 2020 was a show for me financially as well. Mm-hmm. Um, not being able to do shows or anything like that. So I wasn't making any income, no yeah. money. So top of the year, I get a call from my business manager that runs all my, you know, my business accounts and stuff, my money. And he was like, hey, Des, so we have about four months left until you're at flat zero. Mm. And I was like, oh. I was like, damn. I was like, all right. So I'm going to have to move home. I'm going to have to move back. I was like, wow. Like, so I was really tapping in and I was really 
like praying. And I'm like, God, is this like, because I was mad. Like, I was like, man, like, this is all you had planned for me was to just spend a year and a half in LA and live this dream and tour and meet all these cool people just for me to go back home. Yeah. Like, that's it? That's all you had planned? Mm -hmm. If not, open some doors. That's literally what I said. I said, if not, open some damn doors. And then two weeks later, I'm in the studio trying to make a hit. (laughs) And um, I'm just, like, getting my phone blown up, like, on Instagram. And I'm looking at my comments. And I'm refreshing. I'm like, whoa, I just got, like, 200 new followers. Oh, crap. 250. And then there's comments saying, like, oh, my gosh. Congrats. Lisa used your song. And I'm like, who's Lisa? Like, I'm like, (laughs) not… Because I specifically have been a fan of just, like, Lisa. Like, Uh I love the group. But Lisa is, like, my standout, like… That's my bitch right there. Yeah. Like, Lisa's always been my favorite. So, freaking… I'm like, who's Lisa? Like, what? I talk about Kat a lot. But Kat literally FaceTimed me. She was the one that, like, brought it up to me and FaceTimed me. She was like… Kat's your friend who's… She's yeah, my friend. She helps with my yeah. life and my career and keeps me sane. Um, but she FaceTimed me. She's like, look at this! <laughs> and I'm like, what? What? And she shows me. And it's Lisa dancing to Tomboy. And I'm like, oh… Oh my god. I was like, oh my god. Like, I I was eating. I had to, like, stop eating. I was like, oh my gosh. Like, I was freaking out. I'm like, yo. I'm like, dude, there's already, there's already, like, a million views. Oh my god. Like, the, the views were going up. The comments. My following, like, were, was going up. I'm like, yo, like… Explosion. Like, dude, look at, look at how many… Like, I, I'm able to tell on, like, an app on how many people are streaming Tomboy. And it was, like, thousands. And yeah. I'm like, yo, look how many people are streaming right now. This is insane. So I was like, bro, like this is going to make like Tomboy like go up. The song's been out for two years. And this is going to show a lot of love on the record again. Yeah. And so I'm like, holy crap. So I'm calling my team. I'm calling stereotypes. I'm like calling people from my label. I'm like, yo, do you not see what's happening? And they're like, whoa. Oh my God. Okay. We got to we gotta start game planning. What's like, what can we do with this? You yeah. know, like I have, you know, I have all this like attention and these new supporters and these new supporters are, you know, obviously intrigued with my music and, and they like it. So it's like, we got to feed them, you know? So we were all just brainstorming. And um, I was like, bro, like, I DM'd Lisa multiple times. I've tweeted her. Thank you so much. I've, I've done everything. But I'm like, yo, I, I want her to see that that I'm so grateful that she yeah. used my song. Yeah. And so it obviously made, like, my my label wake up. My label was awake from their, awake from their slumber. And, and my team obviously was like, wow, like, we're finally, like, like we're onto something yeah. because like like I said like starting from 2020 not having to do anything I had to start from the ground up again I'm like okay I got to make a song and we got to find the next single we yeah. got to you know whatever so this like kind of triggered that start and that like you know what I mean revival revival yeah. there you go hell yeah revival it revived you know like like me and my team to just be like yo okay we'll work off this so time goes on still getting thousands of followers each day. Tomboy is 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 now I think like 62 million. Sheesh. Um it yeah, it's crazy. Um and then I was able to meet Mark Twan. Mark Twan was actually working in the studio that I record at like oh, every day. Okay. So he was there with his manager Randy and um I knew he was going by and I knew who he was. So I was like, hey, I'm going to pull up and I'm going to I'm gonna say what's up. So I pulled up on him and they're like, oh yeah, like we know who you are. Like we know Lisa Dance your song. I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm just not no stranger like barging in on y'all's session right uh-huh. now. Um, so we were just chatting and um, there's a taco truck outside. So we ended up getting tacos and we were kicking it in the kitchen in the studio area. And we were just kicking it. And um, Randy, Mark's manager was like, I'm going to, I'm going to call Lisa. And I was like, no, you're not. I'm like, no, you're not. He goes, he goes, so, so he just picks up his phone and it's ringing. And then I hear her voice. <laughs> oh, I hear her voice. She's like, hi. He goes, hey, guess who I'm with? Flips the phone and I'm right there. And I'm like, hi. <laughs> like, I'm like, hi, hi, Lisa. And she goes, oh my gosh. Like she knew who I was right uh-huh. after that. So I grabbed his phone and we were just chatting we got it on video. We got the whole conversation. She was like, she's like, oh my gosh, like, I love your song. And I was like, you saved my life. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, I was like thanking her a billion times. I'm like, thank you so much. I'm like, my song is like, my song hit number one in Thailand, number one in like Vietnam, number one in Indonesia, all over Asia. It was going crazy. Yeah. And so I'm like, yo, thank you so much. I'm like, Tomboy is like, 
a hit again. She goes, I know, I heard, I heard. <laughs> and I was like, but you, like, she's all shy and like all humble. And I'm a like, girl, like, do you know the power you have? Like, you just like <laughs> got me like 100,000 followers in a week. Uh, like, you know, uh-huh. it's insane. Uh-huh. So I obviously was just like thanking her a billion times. And um, so ever since then, we were able to connect and, and we've developed a, a cool friendship. We still haven't met in person yet, but hopefully, you know, she can come here sometime yeah. soon. Um, or I can go there. It don't matter. But hopefully our our cross our cross our cross will pass. <laughs> our cross will pass. Will right. pass. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Like what a story. Thank you. Um, so then, how did that lead you into with with the song with Bi? Bi. Like, how- so, um, obviously, the spark of Lisa, you know, made some K-pop, you know, artists and you know labels and teams um, find out who I like you know, ended up Your finding music, out who I was yeah. from that and my music. So, um, Stereotypes did the record for B.I., produced it. Oh, okay. Um, it was supposed to only be his song, but, um, and, and so they were like, hey, like, can Destiny write on it? Can Destiny write some, you know, support for it? Yeah. I was just sure, like, I'll write, I'll write a verse. So I ended up writing, like, a verse and um, sent it back. And they are like, dude, Destiny sounds incredible. Like, can we keep her on it? And I was like, yeah, you can keep me on it. Hell yeah. <laughs> so we're like, okay, dope. So the song was me and him. And that's how it was going to roll. And we're like, now, nah, like, we should put another, like, American artist or rapper or whoever. So we ended up getting Tyler Yahweh. Um, um, he's super talented rapper, artist, super great guy. So he ended up getting on it. And the song was was done. And we were like, yo, like, okay, let's shoot a video. We ended up shooting a video. Um, obviously, B.I. couldn't come here, but he did right. his thing here. Me and Tyler did our thing out here. Um, and, and we created a, a dope visual, and the song is doing really well. The it song, is, yeah. song slaps. So um, that was my first like K-pop collaboration, I, I would say. Man, you're living like the K-pop stands dream, bro. Right and, now. But it's so fun because it just gives. It's just something new and yeah. something fresh, yeah. you know. So I think fun. I think that's like the cool thing uh, when we look at like K-pop artists or just like doing interesting things with. Western artists as well. It's like it's such a synergy that like it's unexpected, but it's mm-hmm. so fresh and it's cool. And it's fresh, yeah, and it just makes me want to learn more. Like I've even tapped into like the Korean culture and like trying different uh, foods and things like that. Because I'm like, bro, if I'm gonna go to Korea soon, I'm probably gonna be, be I'm probably ready. gonna be busy. I'm probably gonna be busy, and I'm gonna be there for a long time. So I need to just tap into these foods. I gotta tap into the language. I gotta tap in, you know, to everything. So I'm literally like, I just love learning about. Desi sounds culture. committed to Korean culture right now. I really and I'm am. All about I'm it. obsessed with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, well, thank you for for that story. That's such like hey, I had no idea. I'm so glad I know that story now. It's like a fascinating story. Um, well, we had a lot of fans. Speaking of fans, we had a lot of fans send in a bunch of questions for you. Love it. Let's so go. we're gonna go through some of these real quick. Let's get it. All right. This is from Colin Wu. If you could describe your comfort. With flavor or smell, what would it be? That's such an interesting question. My comfort with flavor or smell. Describe your comfort with flavor. Well, I'm going to do both. How about okay. that? When I think of flavor, I think of my grandma's basole. Basole, basole. Is, is a Mexican soup. Um, we, My grandma would make this on occasions like Christmas time, New Year's, things like that. Obviously, when it's winter. Um, so when I think of comfort, I literally just think of it's wintertime, it's cold, and it's a, it's a bomb soup. The flavor is incredible. So I think of my grandma in my hometown, in my roots. Mm. Um, when it comes to smell, <laughs> the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, like when you're in your car and you turn it on and you turn the AC on, there's that smell that comes out the vents. Yeah. I kind of like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> I'm serious. Yo, it yeah, it, it it I like it because in my mom's old Honda Honda Civic, it was like a 2004. I was little. I remember my mom would turn on the AC and it'd be that just that like that. I don't even know what it's called, but it's just like the first like five seconds of when your car kicks on and there's air and it has that smell coming through the vents. I would literally stick my nose up to the vent and. I swear to God. And yo, I be catching myself. I just got a new car at the top of the year and it has like a similar smell to that. So every time I turn to my car now, I'm like, 
Yo, that's the smell. It makes me think of my mom. And when I was a kid. Oh, wow. I'm weird. That's, I've, I've, you know what? I have never in my entire life heard anybody be like, I love the smell one of, of a kind. car air conditioning when one it starts kind. for the first five seconds. You are one of a kind. <laughs> you are one of a kind. Thank you for that detailed answer. Oh, you're welcome. Sheesh. Damn, that guy. Yeah, that guy got, got the weirdest yeah. out of me. Um, right. This is from Wiser Mouse. Little Mouse. Wiser Mouse. Little Not mouse. a question, but just let her know her song Tomboy is on six different playlists I made that have different themes and emotions for each. That is how versatile the song is. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. That is really dope. That's, that's six different playlists. That's, that's incredible. Six different moods. I love that I'm able to satisfy different moods and emotions for y'all. That's really sick. Whew. All right. This is from Angel Tattooed. The best advice that you have ever received in your career. In my career. Yeah. Should it is it just from anything? Any t- I don't know. Do you know what? What's the best piece of advice you've ever gotten ever? I would say. Obviously, it's not anything like brand new, but obviously to like never give up. That's literally one of them. But my mom would always tell me and my sister two things. Don't be dependent on no man because you can do everything Mm -hmm. you can. Two, don't talk about it. Be about it. If you're talking up all of this on what you want to do in your life, and the things you want to accomplish, the things you want to succeed at, and you're not putting in the work or the effort, like, I don't want to hear it. Yeah. I will I will believe it when I see it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So that was like the boost of confidence and motivation that she told me. She told me that literally like right after my parents split up because my mom had to do all the all the manly work in the house, like mowing the lawn and, and fixing stuff. And my mom never used to do that. My dad yeah. always did that. So my mom had to had to step up. So that's when she was really strong on don't be dependent on no man destiny. Whatever mm-hmm. you do, like mm-hmm. you can do whatever. You're a man and a woman. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so that was one thing. And then don't talk about it, be about it. That's like just the best advice because I have these, I still have goals and dreams for myself and um still working towards that. So it just motivates me to keep working and keep moving, not All stopping. Right. What I mean, what is your like your biggest dream? Where do you where do you want to be? I just want to be the biggest artist in the world. I want to I want to be able to sell out arenas, stadiums. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I want to have every song that comes out, it's a number one. Mm-hmm. Like Drake, Drake songs, every everything he puts out, it just hits number one like nothing overnight. Yeah. So if I have the power and I have the ability and the fan base and the career to be able to just leave people's mouths like just jaw drop every time they mm-hmm. see me or every time they see a video, every time they even see me perform. It's like, I want them to be like, holy crap. Like, yeah. this girl I need to play around with. You know? So I, I just also just want to be an inspiration as well to the Word. community and to the world. Word. Yeah. Um, this is from Skylar Cam. Can you do a live cover of your song, Lockdown? It's not a, it's not a cover. It's a live performance. Is she it? wants me to sing? Could you sing a little bit of lockdown? Yeah, let me take a sip of water. Take your water, take your do your breathing exercise, your vocal warm up, do whatever you need to do. Can we do a little snippet of song? All right, lockdown. I'm gonna do a verse to pre of lockdown. <laughs> I'm so excited. All right, let me adjust. How's this? Yeah, get your posture right. You know, you gotta get the oxygen flowing. Damn, this girl put me on the spot. It's so funny. She literally goes, right now? <laughs> it's so, no, because it's this has been happening a lot. Really? Like, on radio, like radio shits, they're like, yo, can you sing uh, your cover that you did of Lil Rob Summer Nights on your Instagram? I'm like, right now? Like, yeah, acapella if you can. I'm like, all right. So I'm used to this at this point. Anyways, this is locked down. All right. <laughs> this is so funny to me. Like, wow. All right. Love love her. Thank you for her ever asked that. All right. <laughs> She's really just getting me out of my comfort She's zone just right like, now, yo. This girl. Oh. All, hey, man. I'm out here talking up like I don't want to be played with out here. So oh I got to… Don't talk about it. Be about it. See what I'm talking about? Don't talk All about right. Be about it. We want you to do a live performance of Lockdown real quick. That's your camera right there. Okay. If you want to look at that camera. All right. Here we go. First to pre. That's all I'm doing. I'm stalling. Mm. Something inside me changes, my whole mind rearranges, energy so contagious, it's so contagious, got me acting so stupid, just one look and I lose it, tell me why do you do it, 
how do you do it? Cause sometimes I want to give it up to you, baby. Sometimes I just don't give up. One day I might just give it up to you, baby. But right now I just don't give up. If we go in, in no doubt, we might not make it out. I'm not in my feels right now. So baby, you should know, yeah. Woo! Just kidding. Thank you. What if I just really just sucked? What if, yeah, what if you were horrible? <laughs> what if in my head I'm like, yeah, this is good. And I was just like, who's going to tell her? <laughs> Who's gonna tell who's, her? All right, who's, I'm who's not gonna, gonna tell who's her. Who's gonna tell her? We gotta take that out of the video. <laughs> <laughs> who's gonna tell? We have to edit that. That part was out. great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you, homegirl. Whoever asked. Thank you, Skylar Cam. That got me a nice little sweat. Yeah. All righty. So, last thing to wrap it up, we have a lightning round. Just in case we miss anything, just first thing that comes to your head, you just go ahead and answer here. So I have to answer them fast, like yeah. as fast as I can. But I mean, like whatever. You know, we right. do what we want. Let's go. All right. First one. If you could master any language in the world, what would it be? Spanish. Ooh. Biggest pet peeve. Phoebe. No. Biggest pet peeve. When someone's breast stink. Oh! <laughs> Why are you looking at me like… No, okay. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. When someone's uh, breast stink. All right. Justin Bieber's one time or Daniel Caesar and hers best part? Oh, one time, duh. Oh. It's lunchtime. What do you eat? Chick-fil-A. Ooh. <laughs> if you could switch bodies with anyone from Fifth Harmony, who would it be? Normani. Normani. Favorite lyric ever. Oh my god. Oh my god. There's not no lightning round with this question. Favorite lyric ever? Probably this this song by her that's called um Rax. It's called uh one of the lyrics from top of the head is if I spend a hundred bands, I'm gonna get it right back up. No matter how much money I'm about to spend, I'm gonna work hard and I'm gonna get my money back up. Ooh. I think that's pretty dope. Alrighty, alrighty. If I spend a hundred bands, I'm gonna get it right back up. All right, skating with Letitia or karaoke with Kalani? Uh, I probably would skate with Letitia only because I haven't met her yet. I've met Kalani before. Alrighty, so that would just cross it off my bucket list. There you go. Skydiving or bungee jumping? Skydiving. What was your reaction when Billie Eilish followed you on Instagram? Um. I couldn't go to sleep because when I found out I was… I was actually in Toronto. I woke up at 4 a.m. to pee. And I come back to my bed and I check my phone. And I'm saying, congrats. Billy followed you. Oh my gosh. Billy followed you. Congrats. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is back when she was where the avocados. Uh -huh. So I was like, wait. Billy followed me? So I look and sure enough, she followed me. And I checked her story and she posted Tomboy saying this hard. So I was like, okay. So let me DM her and try to be friends real quick. So I DM'd her. And I'm like, I'm like, bitch, oh my God. Thank you so much for posting my song. She goes, no. She's like, I'm literally obsessed with you. She told me that. I have the DM still. I'm literally <laughs> obsessed with you. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I was like, I've been obsessed with you for so long. And she was like, oh my gosh. Like, like thank you so much. Like, da, da, da. So we had a little conversation. And then… I peeped her checking my stories too. She'd be watching my stories. But not no more because she unfollowed me. But she followed, unfollowed everybody. Sprint, you know how yeah. just people be doing that? Yeah. People do that. They get somewhere and they're like, you know what? I'm just going to follow everybody. I'm like, okay, fine. Where's your Finsta? Let me know. I know. Let me know where that Finsta is, girl. Right? I won't tell nobody. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's your go-to shower song? Oh my god. What's my go-to shower song? I sing everything in the shower. Mm. Probably, probably like Cash It by Megan Thee Stallion. All right. Okay. I'd be rapping. All right. All right. <laughs> I'd be rapping too. Should I, should I put you on the spot and be like, do you want to? No. No. I won't do that. I won't do that, won't do that to you. No. Because you'd have to just bleep every two seconds. I mean, I'm okay with that. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, all right. Last thing is, could you send yourself a message one year from now? Oh my god. Send a message to your one year later self. Hey boo, I hope you're doing okay. And I hope you're hanging in there. I hope you're out there living your dream. I hope you have a number one by then. Um, I hope you're selling out tours, venues. I hope you got a really big fan base. And I hope you have 1 million, at least 1 million followers on Instagram. Um, I hope that you are helping your family out financially and able to provide for them. I hope that that our mom is in a good state and she's happy. And I just hope for 
health upon you and just, you know, just growing and being a, a smart, independent woman like you are, like I am now, but even better then. <laughs> that was weird. I don't even know how I'm saying this. But yeah, I just, I just, I just hope you're okay. And you're moved out of your small apartment and you have a nice house. Goals. And, and a car, a nice car. Goals. I mean, I have a Honda, but a better car, like a G Wagon. Hey, okay. I see what you're trying to do. All right. Upgrade. I'm trying to manifest out here. All right. Manifest. We're going to manifest <laughs> all the goodness in the world. Um, all right. Well, that pretty much wraps up today's show. First of all, thank you so much for making time. That oh, was such a fun conversation. I feel like I know you so much better. I know. I just need to flip the table. Now on she you. knows still knows nothing, know nothing about me. I don't know nothing about you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know your birthday. I don't know anything. I just know um, you're a Scorpio. Oh, a Scorpio. no. I know no, you're November 17th. I, there you go. There you go. That's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. I want to know the last uh, part. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but thank you so much. It's It's been a pleasure getting to know you. Thank you. Um, can you send out like a, one last message to all of our listeners? Yep. Anything you want to say. And your fans who are tuning in, I'm sure. Yep. From all over the world. Shout out to my lowriders. That's my new fan base name. Mm. Shout out to my lowriders. Shout out to the new supporters. Shout out to the people listening that have no idea who I am or what is going on here. But thank you for taking the time to listen to my story. I hope that this was able to impact you, motivate you some confidence in you and um, just inspire you and in, in whatever you want to do in life. So uh, yeah, my name is Destiny Rogers. Go stream Westlag with Kaylin Frill Frill. Go stream Tomboy. Get it up. Get it up on the charts. I love y'all and I'll see you very soon. New music on the way. All righty. Uh, Tebok fam, thank you so much for joining us this week on the Tebok Show with Destiny Rogers and myself, Eric Nam. You guys can, of course, follow us and keep up with us on our socials at The Dive Studios. You can see the videos of this at youtube.com slash divepots and slash dive studios. We are doing really, really ridiculous things on TikTok as well at The Dive Studios. And you can check out our merch stuff, hoodies, all that goodness at shop.divestudios.io. And I think that's it. But we have one more thing to do before we go, don't we? We always do this. This is the, the tradition for the guests. It's for the guests to improvise a quick outro jingle of any sort. It could be anything you want. It's just an outro to the Tebak show. Okay. How is this? How is it pronounced again? Tebak. Tebak. D-A-E. Tebak. -E. Te yeah, there you go. Tebak. You, you speak Korean now. I'm fluent. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh… Uh, just a jingle. All right. Two, three. Thank you to the listeners for listening to the Thebox show. My name is Destiny. I hope you really got to know me. A hey, go stream my music <laughs> before I lose it. Just kidding. I love y'all. See you very soon. Thank you, Eric, for having me. <laughs> Thank you, Destiny. Everybody have a great week. We'll see you next week on the Thebox show. Bye. Hey guys, before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on the notifications for this channel. And comment if you can. And uh, before you go, there's so much more content. Look at this amazing content for you guys to check out. Do it now, please. Okay, bye. Go. Bye.